to a bunch of different characters. This week it's all about how do you maximize your texture efficiency. So you don't want to paint deer and then paint, okay, file new, then paint zombie deer. You might as well just take all the same details, add a few new more, and then, you know, add add something with color that you can click on and off. And that's the nice thing about those adjustment layers in Photoshop and GIMP is that you can click it on and off. Um, so, and again, I do apologize any experienced GIMP users. I'm sure people are like, hey, you can totally do that in GIMP. Um, you know, I have no doubt. I'm just admittedly not as experienced with GIMP. Oh, 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 oh. Actually, I bet I could do this. Uh, so let me open a new layer. Okay, so I make this layer a hue layer. Is that what I can do with it? Cancel. So mode hue. Now what does it do? Image, colors, hue, saturation. I change it on here. Okay. Okay. No. Oh, well, I I'll have to figure out how to do this. Um, that's kind of neat though. How it how it arranges it. Um. Anyway, sorry. Uh, messing around with stuff. Oh well. Um, meh. Oh well. Um, so anyway, yeah. Uh, that's how I would. That's how you create it to be modular. But uh, if this layer did uh, change the the color to green, then all I would need to do is turn it on and off, and I could make that transition. So. Uh, Anyway, along those lines, let's take a look at another of our windows in GIMP and, uh, and another one of our zombie characters. So this one is, oh, hello bird from last week. Uh, no, where, where'd he go? Raccoon, there you are. Um, okay, here's what we're going to do. Ah, there you are. Okay, so similar thing. We're going to go hunt his texture down because I actually just loaded some of these up uh, onto this computer. Raccoon textures, raccoon color. And, aha, he is, let me actually open up. Raccoon 3. Ah, okay. Oh, and he has his zombie on. Um, okay, so let me load into Raccoon Color. Okay. So, with this guy, um, it's, again, very much the same drill. Um, and for some reason it imported this differently. Um, but again, you can see where things are Put together um, in different layers. You know, I, I did the fur effect uh, in different ways. So you do. Oh, okay. Let me just. So I did the fur effect in different ways. I used like a, a sort of furry alpha brush. And again, there's not really an equivalent. Uh, default in GIMP. You know, I mean, I could probably download one, but um, there's not a default in, of that. Um, you know, and I used the same. I use the same UVs as a as an underlay, and you see his scary <clears throat> zombie mouth just popped up. Uh, that's because it's all on this zombie layer. Uh, so this group, and actually, what I did here was I I made a group. Um, for the zombie details. So, uh, you know, if I turn all of these on, 
you know, if I turn the whole group on, then I get all the zombie details. And again, the one missing is that color correction layer where it turns the whole thing green. And actually, this was kind of an interesting conundrum because, you know, normally when I, when I, uh, like with the deer, uh, what I did was I had to desaturate the color because it was a very vibrant orange. So I had to desaturate it and make it kind of greenish. With this one, I made it greenish, but I couldn't desaturate it because it was already gray. So I ended up having to simply uh, just make it a very bright green. So same kind of thing. Um, you know, we have a basic... You know, you have your raccoon, your raccoon UVs, and yep, there he is, and he's all matched up nicely. Um, so, what this one was a little interesting, and again, this is sort of like this is not that it's a small change, but it's not that bad. I mean, you're gonna make two, you're gonna send uh, two models into the project anyway, so uh, let me show you what I'm getting at. So we have this raccoon zombie here. Now, the face looks pretty cool. He's a little smiley right now, um, even though the texture is not smiling. But if you look at it from the side, it looks a little funky. Um, and you may not, like the, the raccoon may not necessarily have um, the nose be like that when it's chewed off. So what I did for this one, and I actually think I did it for the squirrel too. Um, I'll show you the squirrel in a second. Um, I modified the nose. And again, this is like a really small change. Uh, it just kind of... It creates just a very cool effect um, to have the zombie damage sort of like nip away at the nose. And you can adjust the vertices so you get nicely lined up teeth and all this other fun stuff. Um, sometimes you, like by just making some tweaks to a zombie or to a UV or a, to the mesh itself, you can get the effect you want without having to dive into the UVs and change them. Uh, but as you can see, I flattened out the nose for the zombie. And, you know, because again, I'm going to save two versions of the model, one for zombie and then one for unzombie. Um, it's, it's pretty easy that way. Um, but, you know, again, that's that's a lot easier. You can make uh, very minimal changes. Uh, you, know, you know, you don't really have to tear everything completely apart or redo everything to make two versions of the same character. Um, you can make very minor changes, and it makes things very efficient. I mean, really, like, I could have even maybe made the tail less fluffy. And again, that's as easy as as my um, just changing the mesh a little bit um, and then adding, you know, some like cool detail to it. So really, if you do stuff like this and you do like, again, because these are these are kind of fun to see two versions of the same character as their zombie damage. Um, you know, you can do some interesting things with these. So, um yeah, that's, I mean, that's pretty much it. It's very modular. Actually, if you guys would like to see the zombie raccoon animation, this one's kind of fun because um, really with any of the animations, I had to figure out, okay, so what would this thing be doing? Um, so how do raccoons move? Uh, so I, I went online and looked up videos of raccoons moving, and so they kind of have like a sneakiness to them. Um, so, you know, here's the regular raccoon walk, and Where's my raccoon? Oh, the raccoon idol is pretty cool. Um, raccoons kind of like wait and watch and, you know, sort of bob a little bit. Um, so I have him and it's playing at like two-thirds speed. Let me see if I can speed it up. Um, yeah, so he kind of like bobs a little bit and he sniffs. Uh, so anyway, that's... But that's for the, the living raccoon, if I do the zombie raccoon. Um, so this one, this is actually kind of an interesting one to do because I did, uh, okay, 
and he's 45. So I'll do 44 so it loops nice. That way it's not sitting on the same frame for two frames. Um, I looked at, at, and this is kind of terrible, I looked at videos of, of raccoons with rabies and they twitch a lot. Um, so I kind of made his walk a little twitchy. It's like sort of slow and sort of low and his back is arched and then he kind of like twitches around a little bit as he walks. So, um, you know, and, and it was kind of fun to do because the zombie wasn't necessarily, uh, you know, everything, all the other zombies are kind of slow, like low and, you know, they walk very slow and kind of the big loping gait and things like that. So this was kind of neat. Um, and again, one character, uh, five animations, you know, and then one texture file with like two variations based on just what layers you have turned on and off. Um, so uh, I guess there's not a whole lot to show in the squirrel that we haven't covered. I mean, it's just kind of fun to look at. Like we go and open up the squirrel file, uh, open squirrel, squirrel four. The squirrel's just kind of fun. Um, but yeah, squirrel. Uh, there's that squirrel variation. And then if I load up his zombie color, um, and then I put on... With the squirrel, I almost wanted it to seem sort of like mildly snake-like as it as it moved um it's very small so i didn't want it oh that's the zombie attack um mildly snake-ish like so it's kind of like crawling it doesn't really get uh, you know because the squirrel is very vertical it bounces a lot when it moves so i was like well what can i do to make it very